Last winter, we made a video about base training, fact or fiction, where we discussed whether long, slow, traditional winter miles are still seen as the best way to prepare for the following season if you're a full-time rider. And we concluded that no, they are not. Not in the traditional sense of base miles. More and more riders are now adding structure to their winter in the form of intervals and with some intensity as well. Yeah, and you only need to take the example of some high profile riders to see that the best guys are really hitting the season with a bang. So Rowan Dennis, for example, this year, stage win and the overall at the Tour Down Under in January, broke the hour record a few weeks later, won the first stage of the Tour in July, and was instrumental in helping BMC success at the World Team Time Drive Championships in October. Yeah, Tom de Moulin as well. He was flying in the Tour Down Under, finishing fourth, and then he won the individual time trial at the Tour of the Basque Country in April, third overall in the Tour de Suisse in June, and then he very nearly won and won the Vuelta in September. Yeah, true. And Chris Froome, yeah. both years he's won the Tour, he's also won his very first race of the season back in the February. Yeah. So clearly these guys are doing some very focused training in the winter. But how exactly are they structuring it? Dan, I think we need a coffee and a sit down oh, to go through this. I thought you'd never say it. Well, we have been doing a little delving and it seems that some riders now are experimenting with reverse periodization. Mm. This basically means turning base training on its head. So starting off with the more intense rides and gradually increasing the volume of the riding that you're doing as things progress. Now, this doesn't mean going out and doing all out efforts for one minute on a climb, but more very consistent and solid sweet spot and threshold sessions. Yeah, so Tim Kerrison, who is the man behind both Chris Froome and Bradley Wiggins' Tour de France victories, first started using this method when he was coaching swimmers back in the early 2000s and then latterly moved on to cyclists. Now he had this to say when he spoke to Ride Magazine. Struth, mate. No, he didn't say that. Uh, we flip things on their head, starting with intensity, strength and speed, then layering on at the more aerobic conditioning elements on top of that as the season progresses. Wow, thanks That's just like Tim. Uh, and it makes sense in more ways than one. So intense sessions are best done when you're fresh. And of course, you're going to be fresher at the start of the winter when you've just had that break at the end of the season. And secondly, and this applies almost more to us now that we're working full-time side than it does for full-time. Do you work full-time, do you? Yeah. <laughs> It makes sense to do the longer rides when the weather gets better and do those shorter, more intense rides when the daylight hours are less and the weather's not so good. Off the bike training is important for the pros as well. So Bradley Wiggins at the end of 2011 highlighted a couple of weaknesses and one of those was a lack of ability on steep climbs. So when his coaching team had a look at it, they decided that was down to core strength or lack of. So he spent a lot of time that winter making sure that he worked on strengthening the muscles that weren't becoming strong enough through cycling alone. And another thing which riders seem to be doing more and more of is altitude training throughout the entire year. So it seems these days that we can often see pretty much the entire peloton over on the island of Tenerife on the build up to the Tour de France each July. But increasingly riders are trying to replicate this in the winter months as well. Yeah, so Rowan Dennis, uh, in an interview with Velo News back in February 2015, said that he had spent eight weeks sleeping in an altitude tent of between 10 and 14 hours a day. Now that's a commitment that probably none of us can replicate, but it is interesting nonetheless. Yeah, and apparently it's not just to stimulate the production of red blood cells in our body, the oxygen carrying cells that fuel the muscles. Again, Bradley Wiggins highlighted another weakness back in 2011, whereby he was struggling when climbs went over an altitude of 1800 meters, and that was due to a quick decline in the oxygen saturation of his blood. However, regular training camps at altitude really helped him to address that weakness. On the other hand, we should definitely admit and highlight, in fact, that these professionals are not completely neglecting traditional base training and longer rides. No, in fact, a recent blog post by Tom de Moulin's coach, Adrian Helmantel, showed us exactly that. So he said that Tom, some time ago, already had one of the best power to weight ratios in the world. What he was struggling with was producing that power at the end of a long race. And he was also inconsistent, quite regularly having bad days in the middle 
or sometimes at the end of a stage race. Yeah, so their strategy was to develop a really strong base fitness over a number of weeks before even concentrating on time trialing and climbing power. So something more akin to traditional base training, you might say. So what on earth do we conclude now? Well, as with everything, one method is clearly not going to fit everyone. But we can see that highlighting and then working on your weaknesses is obviously a major part of every pro's winter training strategy, as our examples have shown. Yeah, one thing is for sure though, training principles are changing and constantly being developed. So coaches these days have access to more data than they ever had before. And with companies such as Garmin, producing things like pedaling dynamics, software and hardware, we can now see how we're pedaling as well as how much power we're putting out. Yeah. So clearly, ahead of us, there's still a big learning curve. Yeah, and we can see though that structured training will benefit all of us as well, not just full-time riders. So if you work really hard this winter and you come out and you're in your first race next year, then someone tells you that you peak too soon, well, time to bugger off. I was never told that I peaked too soon, actually. No? I never won my first race, or my last race, or my middle race. Anyway, if you would like to see our original base training fact or fiction video, you can find that by clicking just up there. Yeah, or for a little bit more insight into that whole pedaling dynamics thing, we've got a video and you can see it just down there. And to subscribe to the channel, the Global Cycling Network, GCN, it's absolutely free. All you've got to do is click on us. We're peaking. We're not doing base training, it's fiction. No. In fact, that's a long enough ride, I think. <laughs> <laughs>